So, so far you had an idea on parametric modeling issues, so with instances, uncontrollable actions and time or probability constraints. Now we will focus on the problems that we will address in the parametric setting. So a time automaton is a finite state automaton, that is a set of locations, a set of actions, so we have transitions with action labels, and we have uh, what we call clocks. So clocks are real-valued variables that evolve linearly with time all at the same rate. So those clocks uh, can be used in location invariance. So here we have that uh, clock y should be smaller or equal to 5 to remain in the blue location. Here clock y should be smaller than 8 to remain in the blue location. We have guards. So guards are transitions that should be uh, matched by the clocks to take, uh, to take a transition. So here x should be larger than 1 to be able to uh, loop on the blue uh, location. Here y should be exactly equal to 5 and here exactly equal to 8. And finally, of course, uh, the main interest is that we can reset some of the clocks. So here both clocks are reset together. But on this transition, only clock x is reset, so then from the blue location onwards, both clocks have different values. This is where uh, time automata are powerful. What is very briefly the concrete semantics of time automata? So a concrete state would be a pair with a location, so the location is a discrete part, and a clock valuation. So we have a real valued uh, value for each of the clocks. And a concrete run will be an alternating sequence of concrete states and either actions or time elapsing. So let me give you a few examples of concrete runs for this coffee machine. So I didn't explain the model, let me do it now. So this is actually a coffee machine with, uh, uh, with three uh, discrete states. The green location is idle mode, so initially the coffee machine is idle. Then, if we press the button start, we will enter the blue location, which is a location in which you can add sugar. So how many doses of sugar can you add? Actually, you can press uh, any at least one time unit, meaning, and you can stay up to five time units because Y is not reset. So you can add at most five doses of sugar. When Y is equal to five, we get the cup we go in the red location, which is where the uh, coffee is being prepared, and then after eight time units, you would get the coffee. So possible concrete runs for this machine uh, will be as follows. If you want a coffee with no sugar, you can stay as long as you want in the green location, so for instance, 15.4 time units. Then you would still be in the green location. Then somebody will press the start button. So you are now in the blue location. You don't want any sugar, so you don't press the sugar button, you just stay until the guard y equals to 5 is satisfied to leave the blue location, so you get there, then you um, get your cup, then you wait until the guard y equals to 8 is satisfied to go from the red to the green location, so you have to wait 3 time units and you get your coffee. If you want a coffee with 2 doses of sugar, so you are in the green location, you press start button, you can Wait as much as you want, but it should be more than 1 and less than 5, so let's suppose 1.5. Then we can press the sugar, sugar button, notice that the x clock is being reset at the time. Then we can wait any time uh, as long as it's more than 1 and less than the remaining time, so for instance 2.7, we press against the sugar button. And then we just have to wait until the y equals to 5 uh, guard is satisfied. So it makes 0 0.8 time units so that the y uh, equals to 5. Then we get the cup, wait 3 time units, and we get our coffee. So what kind of uh, properties we can verify in a, in a time automata? So for instance, we can ask, once the cup is delivered, coffee will come within 2 seconds. And here, this property is actually not satisfied. We know we have to wait until uh, 3. Um, time units. It is possible to get a coffee with five doses of sugar. Yes, it is. It is if you press exactly five times the sugar button right on time, meaning as soon as you get here, as soon as x is equal to one, you reset it, takes the sugar, then x again equals to one, when y is equal to two, y equals to three, y equals to four, and then when y is equal to five, you can first press the sugar button and then in zero time immediately go there. So it's a very non-robust behavior because if you wait infinitesimally a small time 
a little more than what you should have done in this um, before pressing the sugar button, then you will miss the last sugar at uh, y equals to 5. So this is non-robust behavior, but theoretically, with this model, it is possible. After the button is pressed, a coffee is always eventually delivered, then here yes, and it is impossible to press a sugar button twice within one second. This one is actually not satisfied because it's a borderline behavior, but you could press the sugar button, say, when y is equal to 1, and then when y is equal to 2. So in, within this one interval between 1 and 2, you have two sugar pressures, the first one when y is equal to 1, and then when y equals to 2. So why do we have timing parameters? The first challenge is that systems may be incompletely specified. Some delays may not be known or may change, and we would still like to verify the system. A second challenge is the one of robustness. What happens if a timing constant, for instance 8, is implemented with something very close but not equal, for instance 7.99? And another question is, can I really get a coffee with 5 doses of sugar? And I just said before, the answer is no. In theory, we can verify on the model it is possible. In practice, it is not possible, because you should be infinitely precise, pressing the uh, sugar button exactly when y is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But any infinitesimal variation of this um, preciseness will have you miss the fifth dose of sugar. A third challenge is the optimization of timing constants. So a question could be, up to which value of the delay between two actions sugar can I still order a coffee with three doses of sugar? And the last challenge is to avoid numerous verifications. Sometimes we would like to check that the system is correct for many different values of the timing constants. And so if one of the timing delays of the model changes, is the property that was proven valid still valid, or should I model check again the whole system? And so one solution to answer dif different uh, challenges is parametric analysis. So we will consider that those timing constants are unknown, so they are parameters, and we will exhibit good valuations for those parameters for which the system behaves correctly. Parametric time automata extend time automata with parameters. So we still have locations, actions, clocks, and now we have a set of parameters that we can use in some of the guards or invariants. So invariants here, guards, guards, and guards. We can still use timing constants if we like. So at this stage, you have an idea on parametric time automata and the challenges for parametric analysis. We will, in the next sequence, study decidability results.